my friends, here is a uh, financial bait and switch that should draw your ire. It certainly does me, and I just, I hate this stuff, man. I hate it. I'm going to share with you what it came across my, uh, my feed here this morning. This is from moneymorning.com. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I go onto my uh, phone, and I, you know, as I'm waiting for coffee in the morning, I get my little stuff from Bing. I look at Bing because at least they give you a kind of headline, and it gives it always gives me a wonder if I have something I want to talk about. And so I'm looking at the headlines. I come across actually a couple of weird things. Some are, some guy got a CRPS. I don't. Know. I mean, I used to have a CRPS, but 15 years ago, I don't know why it's on the big headlines. It's strange, the Bing headlines. But then I came across this one right here. I said, oh, this is interesting. The retirement trick that will help you reach your dreams. Reach your dreams. If you ever saw Napoleon Dynamite, and you should because it's literally the best movie ever. Uh, <laughs> Pedro's running for school president. He said, vote for me and I'll make you, I'll, I'll help you reach your dreams or you'll achieve your dreams. It's uh, one of the funniest clips ever. Uh, Napoleon Dynamite, one of the best movies ever made. I'm just telling you right now. Back to the Future, Napoleon Dynamite, uh, and then The Lord of the Rings, probably my top three. Yeah. All right. So let's read this from Alexander Bird, uh, Money Morning. I don't know what Money Morning is, and after this, I don't plan on wanting to know. The numbers are sobering. According to a recent report from the GAO, the median retirement savings for Americans between 55 and 64 was only $107,000. If you broke that down into monthly payments for 30 years, that amounts to only $300 a month, a fraction of what you need comfortably. It gets even worse. The median retirement savings for all Americans is a meager $5,000. The sad truth of, uh, the sad truth is that countless of Americans are well below the bar they need in order to enjoy the best years of your life. But it doesn't have to be this way, even if you're nearing retirement age. Oh, really? Really, Alexander? Oh, you're going to tell us? You're going to tell us? Today we look at the hard numbers behind retirement and, and how you can beat the trend and invest a little bit better. All right. Uh, as a GAO report suggests, millions of Americans are lagging far behind meeting the retirement goals. Uh, but that's not the worst of it. According to a survey from Go Banking Rates, one in three Americans have absolutely nothing saved for retirement at all. And then they give a special announcement that they're giving away something. And according to a survey from the same firm, 42% of the nation's overall uh, population has less than 10000 to put away for retirement. All right, look, I, I'm not going to get the details of the survey because, Frank, I don't care. I mean, anytime I see these surveys, I, I just take it all with a grain of salt, and you should too. All I care is about me, 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 me. I hate to sound like that, but at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is your specific retirement needs. Now, with that said, what is Bo, GoBankingRates.com? What is, I mean, just... How are they surveying these people? What is their survey size? What is the constituents of the survey? What if, what this, what that? You gotta think, factor all these things out. And I, I guarantee you, our man Alexander here did not do that, just going on the headlines of go banking rates, and that's fine. But it's just, I'm telling you, man, I, <laughs> fool me once, shame on me. Was it fool me, no, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I've been fooled so many times by these uh, reporting that's just uh, nefarious. I don't know how else to put it. All right. So that's only 1% of the, so basically, hold on a second. According to that same survey, 42% uh, of the nation's overall population has less than 10,000 put away for retirement, which is only 1% of the 1 million many experts recommend saving before you reach 65. <sighs> Let me guess, healthcare is the biggest cause for bankruptcy too. That might sound like a huge number, but that's what you'll need. According to the BLS, adults 65 and older spend an average of 45,000 a year in retirement. If you have a million dollars in the bank at 65, you can expect to run out of cash after 22 years. I don't get it. That's just over the average retirement length of 18 years. And with the average life span increasing, it means you might need to struggle even more to make ends meet. That's increasingly the case with many folks at retirement age who are struggling to stay afloat by retiring on their nest egg. In the last 10 years, the numbers of seniors declaring bankruptcy has risen to over 7%. Uh, that's a 233% increase over senior bankruptcy levels in 1991. Yeah, and why do you declare bankruptcy? Because you get too much debt. Could it have something to do with medical bills? Sure, absolutely. Which, huh, because I thought Medicare for All would save that. Because they're saying, Bernie Sanders says, medical saving, Medicare for All would eliminate the need for bankruptcy in retirement. But yet, a 7% of all seniors are declaring bankruptcy. That doesn't sound like it did because I guarantee a lot of that is due 
uh, to medical bills without question. Not not for everyone to be freaking out about that not more than half of the people are going bankrupt because of medical bills. But huh, how does that how do you square that circle? All right. It's because people take it home. They have too much debt and they go in retirement. They bought too big of a house. They didn't pay it off. And they spent it too much. Either way, that's why, because more and more people have debt as they retire. Not many, uh, now, many retirees de- uh, tend to dismiss these concerns, saying that the money they paid into Social Security should be enough to get them out of a tight corner. But don't be so sure. With this, without significant reform, the Social Security administra- Administration estimates they'll need to cut Social Security payments by 23% in 2033. That means after Social Security runs out of reserves, it won't be able to meet 77% of public demand for Social Security. I I don't disagree with that, but let's go back to here. (laughs) BLS, the average uh, average 65-year-old adult household spends $45,000. Okay, so if you're getting $40,000 a year from Social Security, even if they cut it back by, what is that, 23%, you're still getting $30,000 a year? You don't need a million. All right, so let's keep going back. Uh, Let's see. Plus, investing in the stock market alone might not be enough to fully fund a retirement plan anymore. According to Morningstar, U.S. stocks are unlikely to yield a more than 1.8% return over the next uh, 10 years. Uh, that must be real term return. Uh, that's I don't or I, I don't know where we'll have to look in that. According to Morningstar, U.S. stocks are unlikely to yield. Are they saying yield as in dividend yield? Which I agree, but. Uh, anyway, we'll keep talking about how this is bait and switch. That's barely higher than the Fed's projected 10-year inflation of 1.73. Where was he getting this 1.8? But you don't have to suffer. Take on a second job or keep working through your golden years. By mixing trading into your investment plan, you can amplify your income and meet your retirement goals. And that's even if you've already retired. Take a look at our, how our system has helped investors just like you. This seven-day crash course could help turn a million a dollar into thousands. And you got to sign up below and all that. <laughs> Jeez, man. And there's a bait and switch. <laughs> We're all going to die. And you can survive. But first, pay me and I'll show you this behind door one. Like Bob Barker. All right, let me read that Morningstar thing. See, this is stuff I hate, man. The seven-day cash course could help you turn a dollar into thousands. Just take a look at our system, and you get a, tra- it's a, a strategic tr- trading plan. Yeah, because they're so good at it, they have to advertise here. All right, pause for just a second and look at this Morningstar thing. All right, my friends, so I clicked on the link uh, that they showed us here, uh, investing in the stock market about Morningstar's 1.8% annual return projections, and that only took me here, uh, which is uh, a guide to investing today in the stock market. If you have 20 seconds, you can make 2,500 bucks or whatever. And I just, I hate that stuff. Anyway, so I, I, did, I figured, let me look up Morningstar's 1.8% rates of return expected forecast. And this is uh, last year, January 2018. And Frank, I got to say, they were right. They, were, they, they do say what Morningstar expects. And I'm just, <laughs> I just, it's nuts. All right, so let's go down here. We're going to start with my man Bogle, rest his soul. Uh, he thought uh, 4% returns for stocks, 3% for bonds over the next 10 years. And how does he get that? Uh, now, investors with a very long time, 20, 30 years, can reasonably assume the market returns will be in line with their very long-term historic norms of 8 to 10% stocks and half that amount for bonds. I agree with that. But for the next 10 years, Bogle says 4 for stocks and 3% for bonds. And he gets that by uh, simply taking him. Uh, the, 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 the S&P 500 currently yields uh, less than two, and Bogle expects earnings growth year over year will run about four. So you take EY plus DY. EY is earnings yield or earnings growth year over year, which is uh, four. Uh, DY is dividends. That's uh, four plus two is six, and he says he's going to get a price a cut because of a high PE ratios. He says so he expects uh, reasonable expectation for stocks about four uh, percent. Uh, and it arrives, he gives bonds 3% just by looking at the 30-year treasury. And I agree with that. Um, now, that is before inflation kicks in, too. So that's, you know, that's not good. That's not good. GMO, all, always uh, negative Nellie's GMO. I just find it funny because the guy who runs GMO, Jeremy Grantham, is a big green guy. And yet he flies all over the, around the world to tell you how we're all going to die from climate change. It's just, it, it infuriates me. Uh, they're calling negative 4.4% real. Adjusting for inflation uh, for U.S. large caps over the next seven years and 2% real for emerging markets. Uh, you didn't expect a sunny forecast from GMO, did you? No, true to pessimistic form. 
We're in the late innings of the bull market, whatever. Um, but here's where I, this is odd to me. Uh, Morningstar, 1.8% uh, 10-year nominal. That's before inflation on stocks. 2.5% 10-year nominal return on bonds. So essentially, stocks are going to be the negative when you factor inflation, and bonds are going to be the negative or right at the negative when you factor inflation as well. So stocks will give you negative returns over the next 10 years, and bonds will give you basically breaking even. I, I just... Uh, I was stop. I'm stunned to see that. I just, I literally don't believe it. But that's, uh, that's nuts. I get GMO. I mean, my goodness. Uh, Bogle's always been talking for a long time. And Vanguard too, about five, five and a half percent. I, I would fall the five and a half percent model. I, I don't get why. Yeah, that's just weird to me. I mean, because they, they say the PE ratios are so high that they're going to adjust to more normal norms. And I, I just, why? I, I, I don't. It doesn't. It just, literally doesn't make sense to me. P.E. ratios are high. They're not extraordinarily high. They're about 20. Well, I don't even know what they are now. Between 20 and 22. Historically, they're 15. But the 10-year trend, let's take a look at the 10-year right now. Yeah, I saw last night, it's it dropped to 2.4. So the 10-year treasury right now is uh, 2.395. I just, I don't get it. I mean, you're getting... More almost on the dividend yield of stocks than you are getting on the 10-year treasury. So that means inherently the dividend, the stock price will have to drop with for seven years more than, I mean, at least 2.39% a year uh, to accommodate the, what you're getting on your dividend. Uh, just each and every year, that just, just to break even. Okay, whatever. I don't get it. Research, research affiliates. That's it. That's what I like. Yeah, my man Bob. Is it Bob Arnott? There's a, yeah. I like them. They say 0.3% returns for U.S. large stocks in the next 10 and 0.8 for uh, bonds. Um, Schwab, yeah, Schwab says, but I, this is where I'm going. 6.7% expect, expect a nominal return for stocks, 3.1% uh, for investment grade bonds, one nominal before inflation. So we factor out, let's just say, two inflation. And you're getting, you know, basically four and a half to five on stocks and, you know, less than about one on bonds. I agree with that 100%. Vanguard, yeah, here we go again. Uh, five, uh, three to five percent uh, during the next decade. Uh, five and a half to seven and a half percent for non-U.S. stocks. Uh, two, two to three percent for global fixed income. Yeah, I agree with that. That's where I. That's where I go. Um, this is from Christine Benz. Anyway, that's a little bit scary on Morningstar's part. Anyway, I, what are you gonna do? I mean, my goodness, what are you gonna do? Just keep plugging away. There's literally nothing else to do. Um, so diversified, get some gold, real estate. You have your house in real estate. I just, uh, the idea that I don't, I don't get it. I mean, yeah, whatever. We'll have to see what happens. It'll be interesting to see. Let's go back to the initial thing though. The bait and switch. We are going to tell you what to do to, to help you this one retirement trick to help you reach your dreams, but we're not going to do it until you give us our information and pay us. I hate that stuff, my friends. Watch out. All right. We'll see you next time.